بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب الشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي I am Dr. Mudassir Shahbaz Associate Professor Sahara Medical College Narawal Today we are going to discuss about the interior compartment of the leg. Before starting our lecture, you can feel the leg, your leg, right or left. It's starting below the knee joint and you can feel the condyles of tibia. If you go down, the bulk of muscle is more posteriorly and you can feel the interior border of the tibia up to the ankle. And also if you roll down your hand on the medial side, the whole surface of the tibia can be palpated. It means that this is subcutaneous. This surface of tibia can be felt. And if you go low down, you feel two projections, one on the medial and other on the lateral side at the ankle. One is the medial epicondyle on the medial side and lateral epicondyle on the lateral side. And if you go down, you can roll your hand over the dorsum of the foot and if you f move the f your fingers or dorsiflex your foot over the ankle joint, you can feel certain tendons which are felt by the movement of the big toe as well as the little toes. So keeping these things in mind, now we are going to discuss about the interior compartment of the leg. So here we can see the interior compartment of the left covered by the skin and certain markers then can be appreciated over the leg. Here in this slide we are seeing that here is the patellar ligament which is attaching over to the tibia tuberosity. It is coming from patella above it was the quadriceps tendon which is attaching to the upper border of the patella from the inferior border, lower border. The patella ligament is coming down and attached to the tibial tuberosity. <coughs> Here we can see that the main bulk of the posterior part of the leg is the gastrocnemius muscle which is forming the main bulk of the posterior side. And here this surface of the tibia is subcutaneous which can, you can feel over your own body. And, it may, and the interior compartment is lying mainly lateral. Here is the interior border of the tibia which you can feel on your own body. And lateral to it will be the tibialis interior muscles moving towards the foot. Here is a medial malleolus and here is a lateral malleolus and anterior to the medial malleolus is starting the great saphenous vein. In this, on this side we are seeing that while you can see that these big toe and these four toes they are dorsiflexed by the muscles and by doing that certain tendons they become apparent and which you can feel on your own body also laterally the four tendons of the extensor digitorum longus muscle one two three four muscles which are going to the lateral four toes and to the big toe a big tendon is coming down and insert into the phalanx and this is the tendon of extensor 
Hollis's lungs, which you can feel on your own body. And here is the extensor digitorum longus muscles, lateral malleolus, medial malleolus. These are the veins, small tendons, and here are the veins prominent. In this area, which is lateral to the tendon of extensor hollis is longus and medial to the extensor digitor muscle tendon is a site where you can feel the pulse of dorsalis pedis artery means artery which is at the posterior dorsum side of the foot. So by appreciating these structures over your own body then we see that the cutaneous nerve supply of the leg, anterior part of the leg. We know that this nerve, saphenous nerve, which was a component of content of adductor canal, leaves the adductor canal, piercing the fascia, and then becoming the cutaneous nerve, supplying the medial side of the thigh, medial side of the leg and part of the posterior side of the leg and this is having L3 and L4 component. Lateral to this above is the common peroneal nerve and in while we were studying the popliteal fossa we have seen that sciatic nerve is divided into two parts tibial and common peroneal part. The tibial nerve was moving between the heads of gastrocnemius entering into the posterior compartment while the common peroneal nerve moves laterally, winds around the head of fibula and here is the area which is supplied by common peroneal. This is area which is common peroneal nerve, L4 and S2. If we come down laterally, we see that this area, yellow area, except this small area on the little finger, little toe, all the area is supplied by superficial branch of common peroneal nerve, L4 to S1. And the area here is a small area, the web between the big toe and the uh, first uh, small toe is this area, first web area, is supplied by deep peroneal nerve part of the common peroneal nerve. And laterally here around the little finger, sural nerve, which is branch of tibial nerve, supplies the lateral part of the foot. So here is the cutaneous nerve. By checking this, we can check up to from L3 to L5, S uh, to S2 level of the nerve supply of the cutaneous S2 level of the nerve supply of the spinal cord coming from the spinal cord. So one nerve is lateral cutaneous nerve of cough, common branch of common peroneal nerve. Other is superficial peroneal nerve and then the saphenous nerve and a small area by the deep peroneal nerve. And these, uh, these can be appreciated well when you have a paper with you and you can draw this on the paper and draw the area and try to label it, the area. Then I think so. By recalling this, this will be permanently memorized by you. As in the thigh, we have seen that the thigh has a superficial fascia and deep fascia and deep fascia in the thigh was named as fascia lati and the same deep fascia comes down and also covers the leg and the foot and this fascia deep fascia is named as crural fascia around the leg is a tough deep fascia and it is covering all over the leg and from this deep fascia then the septas move inside attached mainly to the fibula because border of here, the border of tibia is subcutaneous and the two bones they are connected to each other through the interosseous membrane and dividing into different compartments. 
another part of the fascia which is coming from the tibia medial side and is a curved one and attached to the lateral border of or posterior border of the fibula this dividing further the posterior compartment into superficial one and deep and when it goes down here around the ankle so it will form a reticula which similar reticula which was thickening our diffasia as we have seen while we were studying the wrist joint and there was a flexor retinaculum and extensor retinaculum so here on the anterior side there is a superior extensor retinaculum and inferior extensor retinaculum these are named extension in spite of their lying anteriorly extensor because they are covering those structure which will dorsiflex flex or extend the foot that's why they are named as superior extensor retinaculum and inferior extensor retinaculum now while we are discussing the superficial structures so main superficial so one of the structure superficial veins are great saphenous vein and small saphenous vein if we look at the great saphenous vein then now we can recall that here is the dorsal venous plexus and on the medial side anterior to the medial malleolus uh, these uh, the network is forming a main vein which is great saphenous vein it is running upward on the medial side of the leg medial to the tibia and or reaching up to the medial side of the knee joint just entro uh, you can say entro medial of the knee joint and that is <coughs> then it is running upward upward on the medial side of the thigh upward upward up to the saphenous foramina which is located 4 cm lateral and below the inguinal ligament lateral to the pubic tubercle 4 cm and below this uh, inguinal ligament here is the saphenous opening and this great saphenous vein in then entering into the uh, femoral vein so here is a great saphenous vein which is a superficial structure here we can see the small saphenous vein which is extend uh, which is uh, posterior to the lateral malleolus and then it is running running inwards coming on the posterior side in the midline of the posterior side of the leg coming running upward upward and here is an opening in the deep fascia and then it joins the popliteal vein in the popliteal fossa so it is a small saphenous vein it's a great saphenous vein now here we see that these superficial veins the great saphenous vein which is of very clinical importance is connected to the deep veins of the leg through perforators Be above the medial malleolus here we see three perforators upper middle and lower through these perforators this great saphenous vein is connecting to the and posterior tibial vein or the deep veins of the leg through these perforators the blood from the superficial vein enters into the deep vein so these perforators are very important and these are named as posterior tibial perforators or cocket perforators when we reach up to the uh, knee joint and below is the condyles of the tibia here again paratibial perforators are present which will connect the superficial veins to the deep veins and when we come into the thigh we again see the perforators uh, which will be present in the adductor canal as well as in the femoral triangle so these perforators again connected to the deep veins so that the superficial blood can be pumped upward to the veins here again there will be a valve from the saphenous vein where it is joining the femoral vein and here shown the superficial veins which are joining superficial epigastric veins superficial circumflex iliac artery and veins uh, superficial external pudendal and these veins will join the saphenous vein at the saphena uh, 
opening a seven great sephness one at the sephness opening so the importance actually the importance to uh, of these perforators to tell you is that these perforators are guided by the valves and then when the deep muscles of the leg and thigh they contract they push the blood upward and then when it relaxes it creates a negative pressure inside which sucks the blood from the superficial vein into the deep veins and if these perforators they are damaged the blood will pool back into the superficial system and the superficial vein they will enlarge and become very coarse so they will swell up there you can then you can see on the leg of the patient the swelling of the superficial veins the further we will see when we will discuss the clinicals of the great saphenous vein now here is the divisions of the compartments of the leg this the deep fascia of the leg the septals from this deep fascia of the leg extend inward the two bones they are connected with each other through interosseous membrane so there is an anterior intermuscular septa from the deep fascia and is attaching to the tibia here is a lateral or a posterior lateral septa which is attaching to the tibia so here then it divides the leg into main three compartments one is the anterior one other is the lateral one and a posterior to it medially here uh, the it is attached to the tibial border posterior border of tibia or medial posterior medial border of the tibia so here is the again here we can see that a, a septa from the deep fascia is curving curving inside and is attached to the fibula so dividing further in posterior compartment into two parts one is the deeper one other is the superficial one so actual compartments are four but first three compartments anterior posterior and lateral but the posterior compartment is further subdivided by a septa into deeper one and the superficial one another thing which you can appreciate that here each compartment is having its own neurovascular component here is the neurovascular component just anterior to the uh, interosseous membrane here is the anterior intervascular intervas uh, neurovascular bundle here is the lateral neutro neurovascular bundle and here is the posterior neurovascular bundle supplying these each compartment individually now the muscles the main muscles of the anterior compartment if we are concerned now here with the anterior compartment of the leg so main are the three muscles 1 2 and 3 we will see their origin insertion and action and nerve supply so tibialis anterior extensor oralis is longus extensor digitorum longus and peroneus tertius is are the muscles of the anterior compartment of the leg we will study them individually so first muscle is tibialis anterior here we can see the tibialis anterior so we can see that it is arising from the lateral surface of the tibia from the lateral condyle of the tibia running downward downward crossing anterior to the ankle joint and inserted over here the cuneiform medial cuneiform and here is the base of the metatarsal so attached over here so it you if you look at its attachment when it will pull it will definitely dorsiflex the foot over the ankle joint and because of its medial attachment to the medial cuneiform and first metatarsal it will definitely e inverse the foot so two actions and this muscle is supplied by the deep fibular nerve or deep peroneal nerve branch of the common peroneal nerve <coughs> extensor digitorum arising from the lateral condyle of tibia and the medial surface of the fibula because fibula is the lateral bone medial surface of the fibula coming down crossing the anterior to the ankle joint 
dividing into four tendons one two three four tendons attaching to the its respective phalanxes distal phalanx into the toe and by their attachment you can appreciate very well you can uh, perform this function on your foot also by dorsing flexing your fingers i think so when you read the action as you read the action of the tibial anterior so try to dorsiflex your foot and invert your knee that is the plantar surface of the foot turning medially by doing this you can very well understand the action of tibialis anterior similarly the action of digitorum longus can be seen on your foot by dorsiflex your the four toes lateral four toes extensor hallucis longus so is located deep to the extensor digitorum longus and tibialis anterior and it will here we are seeing it and it is originating from the medial surface of the fibular shaft below the extensor digitorum longus and tendon is crossing anteriorly and running are uh, running running and is attached to the phalanx of the big toe so it will act only on the big toe and it will extend the big toe dorsiflex the big toe and this function you can also perform on your body and see the dorsiflexion of the big toe which is performed by the extensor hallucis longus again this is supplied by the deep branch of a deep uh, peroneal nerve branch of the common peroneal nerve fibularis tertius although the tertius uh, the fibularis muscles they are considered to be the muscles of the lateral compartment of the leg but this peroneus tertius is included into the anterior compartment because of its location in the anterior compartment and also its action and nerve supply so here we are seeing the peroneus tertius it is originating from the fibula below the extensor hallucis and it is running downward crossing the ankle joint and attached to the uh, the metatarsal of the little, little toe so fifth one metatarsal of the fifth toe or the uh, little toe of the uh, foot and if we if you see its attachment so its flexion its action will be dorsiflexion of the foot and eversion so this here this tibial anterior was here attached and it was producing the dorsiflexion and inversion but this peroneus tertius is performing the dorsiflexion and eversion and it is supplied by the deep deep fibular nerve so that's why this muscle is included into the anterior compartment of the leg there are two or two three other muscles which are located at the dorsum of the foot we will see them when we will discuss the dorsum of the foot so if we revise ourselves by seeing the and if you have um, the atlas with you opened up in front of you while you are listening my lecture so you can now uh, recall the origin insertion and action of the muscles on the uh, by seeing the muscles on the atlas and try to uh, recall is uh, two attachment proximal and distal attachment and perform the functions the actions of the muscles on your own foot on your own body so that you could you can completely recall the structures and one thing that should be uh, remembered is that the all the muscles are supplied by deep branch of common peroneal nerve which is a branch of sciatic nerve in the popliteal fossa so all these muscles are supplied by uh, the muscles of anterior compartment of the leg leg are supplied by deep peroneal nerve deep fibular nerve deep peroneal nerve in some books because the nerve is located on the fibular side so that is named as fibular nerve another name for this nerve is the peroneal nerve peroneal nerve 
here the here is shown the the structures of the interior compartment of the leg which are passing under the retinacula here is a superior extensor retinacula and inferior retinacula so you can name these structures that the tendon of tibialis anterior tendon of extensor hallucis tendon of extensor digitorum and tendon of peroneum uh, and along with that the neurovascular bundle uh, will also pass into the foot deep to this retinacula and this neurovascular bundle obviously the artery will be coming from the anterior tibial artery and the branch uh, the nerve is the deep peroneal nerve which is branch of the common uh, peroneal nerve common fibular nerve so first structure neurovascular is the anterior tibial nerve and uh, before that again we have seen this so we will study we will discuss the neurovascular of the anterior compartment of the leg that is anterior tibial artery is branches anterior tibial artery and branches and further the location of the uh, neurovascular bundle relation of the neurovascular bundle within the within the leg by seeing the cross section and then the deep peroneal nerve and then we will discuss uh, about the clinical reference and dorsum bum foot will be studies here lee i will show you only the two slides one is the that showing the retinacula is the superior extensor retinaculum here is the inferior extensor retinaculum and these retinacula the superior one is attaching to uh, the two bones that is the laterally fibula and medially tibia and lower part of the uh, tibia and uh, the lower part of the fibula and the function is that uh, the extensor tendons which are lower end of tibia during their contraction and it prevents the spring out of the extensor tendon during their contraction this superior extensor retinacula and inferior uh, extensor retina it has in a white stem and the two the two uh, let uh, the medial stems is a white shape the stem of this is attached to the below here you can see lateral is below the lateral malleolus so it will be attached attached to the uh, is a um, uh, superior surface of the calcaneum which is non articulating you can very well imagine here and its two band the upper band is attached to the middle malleolus a lower band is moving downward into the and is attached to the plantar aponeurosus so these two of uh, these are seen here so we will discuss it with the uh, that thing and inshallah in the next lecture we will see the neurovascular of anterior compartment of the leg anterior tibial artery and the nerve so inshallah inshallah and again the advice is the same one that that as you read or uh, try to perform the function of the muscle on your own body try to feel as much as structure you can feel your own body and always have a atlas or the diagram from the book uh with you to understand it completely uh the actions and insertions of the muscles and while doing such a practice try to label the simpler diagrams as much as you guys in my opinion this diagram that is the cross section of the and this is a diagram of the veins that should be drawn by you this diagram is very simple to draw showing the compartments and the fascia of the leg so you can draw it well uh, on the uh, paper besides you always uh, make it habit to draw this in a very simpler way 
the diagrams need not to be very very much um, highly sophisticated or something like that but they should be attempted by a every student simpler diagrams they should be attempted by the students uh, these two and along with that this diagram these diagrams this diagram and this diagram i will advise to the student that they should write on the paper and recall the structures uh, and they will understand more the structures thank you very much inshallah in the next lecture we will discuss about the neurovascular of the anterior compartment of the leg and also the dorsum of the foot inshallah allah hafiz